Springtime is here and that means it's repot time. So join me today as I repot some Asian symbidiums. Hi, I'm Jess and today I'm going to share with you how to repot Asian symbidiums. Spring is finally here and with new growth starting, this is the perfect time to do some repots. So I'm going to take you along as I repot a couple of symbidiums. When it comes to growing Asian symbidiums, there is a slight difference in how you grow them compared to uh, regular symbidiums. Here in Southern California, I'm growing both of them and they grow them alongside each other and they've been doing quite well so far. I was able to flower the Symbidium Garingii this season so I got to see its lovely bloom and hopefully the other ones will come along in the next year or so. Asian symbidiums take about two years to grow and mature a full growth. So when it comes to flowers, these ones tend to be a little slow growing and gaining traction. Once this plant starts growing and acclimates into your environment, then you can get flowers successfully year after year. Now that's out of the way, there's a couple of things to keep in mind with these symbidium plants. So first off, if you can see the fruits of this plant is very thick and fleshy, just like regular symbidiums. And just like regular symbidiums, they like to grow straight down. And a pot that is taller than it is wider will be great. There are special Cymbidium pots that you can buy with a nice lip to it at the top and it has a nice skinny pot. Um, I like them more for decorative purposes and you can do with any pot that you have on hand but this is just something that I find that to be more aesthetically appealing. For smaller Cymbidiums like the Cymbidium Garingii, I just put them in the regular three four inch uh, containers and they do just fine. Now for media, I think you can use pretty much any orchid media that suits your environment and for this plant. So it needs to be well draining, um, it needs to be slightly acidic, and um, keeps the plant quite stable. Now traditionally, the media is kind of a bonsai soil mix. So it uses akadama, kanama, satsuma, and perlite. If you can't get your hands on those, then I think an 80% to 20% bark to perlite mix would be fine as well. I'm currently using a bonsai mix I created on my own, and it's about one part kanama, one part perlite, and one part akadama. This year though, supply shortages have made it a little harder for me to get bonsai soil, so I'm using about a 50% kanama and 50% perlite mix instead. And we're gonna see how those ones do compared to the ones with uh, an added akadama. Uh, added to it. Since these orchids are considered terrestrial to semi-terrestrial, you want to keep them well watered throughout the growing season and allow it to dry out slightly uh, during the winter season. You don't want to rot the roots and you don't want it sitting in water. So you want this mix to be well draining and flush through every season. Not only that, but when it comes to growing these plants, I like to put some rocks at the bottom to stabilize the pot. Because these plants grow very tall and skinny and the pots themselves are tall and skinny, it kind of throws off the weight balance. And so it tends to tip over in high winds or just, you know, walking by, they can fall over quite easily. So I keep rocks on the bottom to keep it well grounded. And eventually I'd like to put a setup where I could hang them on kind of two rods and let the lip hang between them so that um, I don't have to worry about these plants tipping over in the future. Now when it comes to to positioning the plant in the pot. You want to make sure that the back portion of the plant is towards the uh, lip or edge of the pot and you want the new growth to heads toward the center. And you want to allow at least um, two growths worth um, of space between the edge of the plant and the edge of the pot. Um, when it comes to cymbidiums, it takes about two years for one growth, so that's about four years growth in one pot. So you don't need a whole lot of space um, in the pot for this plant, you just want it to be nice and compact so that you can give it just enough moisture to keep those roots happy. Now, if the root mass is a lot larger than the plant mass up above, then yes, accommodate for the size of the uh, roots and not just for the plant itself above ground. So you may need a bigger pot for what you have given the root mass. So traditionally, when you pot up the media, you wanna put kind of larger grade um, media at the bottom and then gradually move up towards smaller, more finer material so that there's higher moisture towards the top and then allows for more drainage at the bottom. Um, I can't do that exactly because I don't have so many different sizes of material and media, but I do kind of large rocks on the bottom, a little bit of Lekka maybe, uh, depending on how many rocks I have and how big the pot is. And then the rest, I just use the bonsai soil. It's all one size for me, so I don't really mind so much. And with the mix of rock and Lekka on the bottom, it gives enough gradation so that the finer mix is at the top and the coarser mix is at the bottom. For Cymbidium garingii, since it's a smaller plant, I just have a thin layer of rock and the rest is the bonsai soil. So I haven't had any issues for that and I've been growing it for at least a year in that media. Um, so I don't think you really need that really distinct gradation. It just helps keep the mix well draining. Also, when you're potting up the plant, you wanna make sure that the media comes up to about one half or a third above the bulb of the 
of the plant because you want the humidity to kind of rise up and you don't want to expose the bulb too much because it'll lose moisture a lot. Um, here in Southern California, it gets pretty hot and dry. So um, by covering the bulb just a little bit, it'll kind of just increase the moisture around that root zone just to allow the roots to have more room to grow down towards the media and just to get more moisture towards the bottom of the pot. It gets too dry along the rim of the bulbs, then the roots can dry out. And that's one of the reasons why I like to put the bulbs kind of a little inset from the media. It looks like you're burying the bulbs completely, but once it's watered through and it settles down, half of the bulb will be exposed and that's just enough. Like you see a little bit of leaf coming out and then that's perfectly fine. So that's pretty much it when it comes to potting up Asian cymbidium. It's a fairly straightforward process and it doesn't need to be too involved. It just takes a little bit of time to understand um, how to pot up these plants and how they grow so that you can get the most success out of them. I picked up a couple of bare root plants from New World Orchids and they're so stunning. So I'm hoping that this year will be a great year to get a good start on these plants. If you want to see more videos about uh, Cymbidium orchids, please click on the playlist or you can check out my repotting playlist also. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!